I wanted to show the difference here between the extruders that are available for the 10 log or hick top dual extruder 3D printer. This is the original extruder that comes on the machine. And it uses kind of a non, I think a non-standard extruder and um, uh, extruder nozzle and also extruder drive. It's a direct drive from the stepper motor, which means it needs a really big stepper motor. And it is, it is spring-loaded. Some, sometimes the direct drives are not even spring-loaded. This one is spring-loaded. And uh, I haven't used this one that much, um, to be honest. But when I saw that they had a new version out, uh, which had a lot of improvements, and is based on a Titan extruder. This is the Titan extruder with the, the gear ratio. I think it's like a 3 to 1 gear ratio, so that the stepper motor is much smaller, much lighter drives a it has a small pinion gear that drives a large spur gear <clears throat> and it's still it's still spring loaded and also you can you can feed you can put a feed tube right up to here so you, so the filament can come through it can be guided through a tube and we're gonna here from what you from what things you can see from the outside this also has a fan the fan blows on both sides of the extruder nozzle. It would be nice if this extruder block was uh, insulated, but that can be done later. Some insulation can be added later. This one, the original one, only has the fan blowing on one side. So here you're going to get better cooling. The mounting blocks are a bit different too. So this one. The original one had a mounting block that this was that just mated to another block that was on the slide on the x axis. So it was a, I thought it was tapered. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's, it's tapered. It's a tapered connection, but it's still there's still some play when it's when it's attached. So that was so that was on the x axis. And you, when you unmounted it, when you unscrewed it from the back, it would come off like this. And just pretty heavy, hefty parts. You can see from the side profile how much slimmer this Titan extruder is, especially with a smaller motor and smaller mount than the original extruder design. I'm going to remove the cases on both. This one, this one, you remove the case from the back, which is accessible from when you're when it's on the printer. You don't have to take it off the printer. You take off that cover. You can't completely take off the cover without unplugging the fans, and that's I guess I think that's why the case, the cover seemed. Heavier was because of these fans that are connected in there. Now I'll show you this one. It actually has a this nice you access it from the side. And you just you don't have to take the screws out completely, you just loosen them up. So if you're doing maintenance inside the extruder, it's just less screws to take all the way out, which is really nice. And this is this shell feels very light, but then again, the fans aren't on there. You can see that this blower fan is a lot larger on this one than this one than this one than the original one. The original one just has a very small blower fan, and the blower fan, of course, is divided here. This is the 3D printed part. looks looks well made. the The fan that blows on the on the heat sink is smaller on this one, but it's maybe been more direct contact and that or closer. Um, let's see this one when you put it back together. The fan was a little bit further away from the heat sink. So the airflow I think is optimized in this in this Titan model where the fan the fan is like almost directly against the heat sink, very close to it. Uh, the heat sink is also mounted to the aluminum back piece. Oh, so I forgot to show earlier the mount for this one is a slide mount. So 
you mount this onto your x-axis and then this slides down on it and that's how you're going to adjust your your height using two set screws on the side to be able to adjust the z height uh, so that you can get both extruders at the same z height so this block this block is attached to the, the machines. Uh, this is this is a whole machine backplate versus the original design has a sheet metal sheet metal piece for the backplate. That's a whole machine backplate and actually has a, a piece coming off of it. It's got a piece coming off of it here that um, the fans and are the fans are mounted to and the extruder. Uh, heat sink is mounted to that's what that's what constrains the the heat sink and the extruder nozzle and then there's a small um, there's these push to connect fittings and there's a small piece of Teflon tubing going between the two I believe that Teflon tubing it's in in Titan extruders Teflon tubing is supposed to go down into the heat sink I believe and also up all the way up and in, into all the way up to the gears so it fit, just fits fits in there, and so like if you're extruding something that's soft, like Ninja Flex or TPU, it's going to support the whole way and be very slippery. Um, there's not there's not going to be any connections in between where the material could scrape and get caught on. It's a pretty long extrusion path before it gets to the extruder. I'm used to kind of direct drive, more compact extruders like the like is like is on the Zortrax or the Up printers where you don't have this whole length here. Um, I prefer that uh, over these longer ones because especially for, so for softer materials when you're printing like into flex because then there's less um, springiness in between the, uh, between the extruder gears and the nozzle. Let's look at this one. This, this is not a standard design here, at least not one that I'm used to. Um, this has a fairly standard nozzle, um, the block, the heater block, then short throat, and then the, the heat sink, and the fan just blows across the heat sink, and then it's a, looks like threaded rod, probably drill, this drilled out in the center, and I can't tell what happens above that, but um, also a, a, long, a long distance from the extruder gears to the nozzle. But um, its main thing is that it's a direct drive and it's going to require a bigger motor and, uh, and not be as lightweight and also doesn't use kind of standardized parts. I'm not sure whether this is a full metal, which is, I kind of tend to prefer full metal, uh, especially if you're printing high heat, high temperature plastics, but this probably is a full metal all the way, which could be nice to have for high temperature uh, plastics. This, but definitely tricky to put that on. This is so much, every time you pick this up, you're just, you're just like, wow, this is so much lighter. Um, what else to say about this? Well, I mean, I think the only downside to this design is it's got the, the Teflon tubing, which uh, it's good for most for most low low temperature materials. Um, you just run into issues if you're printing high temp stuff. Uh, I've read there's a high temp option when you're when they offer like the replacement of the heater block and stuff and the Teflon tubing. I don't know what kind of Teflon material they use for the high temperature one. Um, it would be nice if it were a all, all metal hot end. So the circuit board has there's a space on here for auto leveling. But it's not being, it's not enabled. It's, there's no, no connector there. And one other cool thing is it does have a LED down here, which uh, will light up the workspace so you can see under there. And that's about it. Now we can put it back together. This one's really easy to put the case back on. Slip it back on. Take maybe some of the screws. As I, was, as I was playing with it, some of the screws tighten up a little bit. They even skeletonized this back area here to reduce weight. There you go. Just snaps in, and then you can tighten it back 
Tighten it back up. This one, you gotta be a little more careful. There's more wires get in the way. Only two screws, but you have to remove them. Which when you're working on the which you when you're working on the printer without having without taking these off, it's a little bit trickier 